James Clem, how are you doing, brother? You doing okay? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I, I have a mix of emotions today. I have high uh -oh. emotions, and I, I have emotions of anger. Oh, no. Well, you don't look very angry. You look really happy, so you can fake it. You're faking I have it pretty well. <laughs> I have something sitting on my desk here that you saw, but I'm not going to show it. Oh, yes, that's right. Yep, they're, they're children. How, so here's the good news is I'm here at home. I'm with my wife. I'm, my dog's asleep at my feet, and I had a great meal today. I have a roof over my head, but yep. there was looting and rioting going on within two miles of my home last night, and that kind of upset me a little bit. And, uh, you know, I had asked myself, would I flee or defend? And that's always a hard question. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I know I, I saw on Facebook a couple of dental offices that were right in the middle of all of it and their, their windows got blown out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, what would I do if I was in that situation? And it's real easy to be the Monday morning quarterback, you know, and mm -hmm. say, well, I would have done this. Or, you know, I don't, I don't know what the right answer is because part of me says, man, I'm going to be in that waiting room with a shotgun. If anybody comes in, I'm going to defend. But then I'm thinking, it's just my practice. It's just a yeah. chair. It's just, you know, what are they going to get out of it? They're going to get, don't, don't, don't take the scalers away. I don't want them to do that. You know, I mean, don't hurt I, yourself with those. Yeah. But. For me, it's a difference between my practice. Um, but if it's my home and my family and I, yeah. I need to defend my, my and protect them, if I couldn't get out, I would do what I need to do. And I'm prepared to do that. I and I, as well. I, my, you know, there's another part of me, too, that I'm a God-fearing person. And I always hold on to the promise that his angels are encamping around us. And I want to also have that faith factor. So I'm having to deal with some human emotions of where I'm angry, but yet I have to have a heart of forgiveness. And that, that will be my talk tonight, by the way, before our great guest comes on. Because, you know, these are emotions we have to go through. And... Um, you know, there's a lot of people hurting out there today, and, and it's, it's terrible what's gone on in our country. It's terrible to see death. It's terrible to see injustice happen. And, um, and so there's a lot of pain, and there's a lot of people hurting today. And my heart goes out to everyone yeah. on that. Yeah. I agree. There's a, there's a lot of pain in our country, but, but yeah. the thing we, we must always remember, and James, this is the reason why we started the show, is that mm -hmm. we are blessed people, and it's not just... Beyond not just measure. Because, yeah, beyond measure, not just because mm -hmm. of the jobs we have and the, and the communities we live in, but the country we live in, and this will work its way through. It, it's, yeah, it, we're, it, it we're has. better than this. It has. It has, and there's, you know, I, re, I have a clean memory of my childhood, and when you, when you see injustice in the world, you, you hate to see people hurt or murdered un, unfairly, and that's not right. And on the counter of that, it, it actually brings up the nature of true society. So when true society acts in like kind, it just shows you where we are. But we have a good country, and it's, it's like a family. You know, there's disagreements in families, and, you know, the, the, the original family had a major problem between Cain and Abel, you know. So. Of course. Yes, that, yeah, that was a big one. No. <laughs> so that, that, that trend's been around for a long time, but uh, I, I have faith. But e even with the faith, sometimes you have to check your emotions at, at the door and, and wait for the good Heavenly Father to get you back in center. I agree. So, mm -hmm. Well, we, uh, I think uh, where I'm going to be looking at all this is that I just need to be a little, I, I need to be a little patient and, and mm -hmm. shut up a little sooner and let, let mm -hmm. somebody speak their, their you know, fears and the angers and just listen. And so uh, if I can just do a little bit of that more, maybe it'll help somebody, somebody else in their, their anger right now. And, and, and the mm -hmm. worst, worst timing out of all this, these dental offices coming right out of COVID shut yeah, down yeah. right into broken storefront windows. I mean, I, my heart just bleeds for these people. Yeah. And, yeah. And, Anyway, well, I know the dental uh, industry is strong. We're um, although we can be our our greatest detractors, and a lot of times it's I think we yeah. all come together to help each other at this time also. So, you know, for me, what I've learned through the years, I used to always hold my emotions in, but now I don't. I I, I have to get them out and process them to bring them back to center because, uh, in the in the long term, in fact, I'll just 
it reminds me of Andy Andrews, and you brought up the butterfly effect the other night. Yeah. His book, which talks about the nine principles of success, one of those principles is having a heart of forgiveness. <laughs> and what does that mean? If I have any anger towards someone else or a group and I harbor that, I'm hurting myself. And it's moments like this when you're challenged, e even with being sh locked down or in our county, they're trying to develop a tracing system, which yeah. creates concerns for me about the Constitution and things like that. And it's easy to get angry. But the most important thing is to have a heart of forgiveness. So when we do treat others, even that have a different opinion than ours, we can be ha, give grace to them in our hearts and project an attitude of kindness. And I think that's what's being challenged within my own heart right now. And that is making sure I choose a heart of forgiveness. And that was kind of my little thing for this evening. Oh, did you? Yeah, you, uh, you didn't let me show your thoughts with James. So I'm going to show it anyway. Look at your dog. I, 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 your do <laughs> I was just, I was just going into it, Todd. I, I couldn't hold it back. But now that I said that, I feel that. <laughs> And, you know, I always feel so much better with our guest this evening because I've watched him through the years and what he does with his practice and his managerial skill sets. And he and his wife, they work together there. And I know his daughter's a dentist. This guy's yeah. awesome. He, just to see how he grows, I would love to hang out in his office for a week and learn a lot. And that's Dr. Gene Messenger. The, hey, he welcome on. The Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you very much. Well, and uh, go ahead, Todd. Well, Gene, uh, I got to say, you're, I have loved getting to know you uh, through digital dentistry, through our events and everything, because I don't think there's anybody in digital dentistry that owns as much technology as you do. I mean, <laughs> you, have like a whole, you have like a whole warehouse of CERIC machines and CT scanners. And tell us a little bit about how your practices run and, and what you do with them. Well, I've definitely been involved with digital dentistry. Oh, back since 1997. That's when I got my first CEREC machine. Um, oh. Now I have seven of them. And I, well. That's amazing. I have, uh, I just bought my second cone beam. So I have my Galileo. Uh, I didn't know that you know that I had uh, an orthophos. I, I've got one of those as well. So I have both of them working. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have in lab. And uh, during this pandemic, I've been teaching myself uh, ExoCAD, which, nice. is, cool. which yeah. is fun. A little different than, um, I think, uh, CEREC is much easier than the ExoCAD, but it's something something else that I can add to the table. When you do that, especially, I mean, anybody that does CEREC realizes that it makes you a better dentist. Mm -hmm. And what I like about ExoCAD is it's taking CEREC to another level, doing more complex cases, maybe doing all on X, uh, really developing more than like onesie twosies, you know, doing mm -hmm. a full mouth rehab and designing it beforehand and letting the patient walk around with it uh, instead of sending it to the lab. Because mm -hmm. I've sent them to the labs before and I actually had my own lab for about 10 years. And uh, actually after I had that for about 10 years, I decided to close it. And and that's when I bought my first Eric machine. And uh, I've never, ever, ever regretted it. It's, it's got me involved in implantology which i absolutely love and um i love teaching that and uh, let's just say i absolutely love what i do and uh a lot yeah. of people tell a lot of people know me because of my passion i love gadgets uh, i definitely <laughs> love gadgets <laughs> so we can say you have passion for the gadgets hey what puck miller do you have or do you have a puck miller yet i have the the mcx5 okay good i also have three printers uh i just got three printers in <laughs> I have the <laughs> Form Labs 2 that I've had for a little bit. Yeah. I, then I bought the Kara print. And then what I really like now is my uh, Form Labs 3B. Okay. I really like that one uh, a yeah. lot. I like that one a lot. Now, are you, are you printing print. prototype hybrids then? Are you, so you're, are you printing your prototype hybrids or are you milling those? I'm milling, uh, like I'm milling my temporaries. Okay. Uh, I, I prefer to mill than, than print. I'll print like a surgical guide for a big case. Yeah. Uh, and you can print a denture, uh, but I, I prefer milled. It seems stronger uh, from what I've been hearing. Uh, but what I like about it is doing the lab side, you, you really start to appreciate what a lab technician has to do if you don't send them 
really good if you send them garbage in garbage out mm -hmm. so it teaches me to be a much much better dentist and the more stuff that i learn i love to learn um the more stuff that i learn the more i appreciate what labs do they wow. a lot well you know I'm, I'm a big fan of yours i follow you on facebook and watch your cases and things like that I admire you quite a bit let's go back you know i'm not done with questions because i i, I want to actually we could you want to talk? You, you this gets something to drink and talk for the rest of the evening. No, <laughs> but, but but so when you're actually machining out your hybrid prototypes, what material are you using for that? I'm using the Ivaclar materials. Okay. Uh, the pump. Yeah, and like PMMA for the teeth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now those are for the temporaries. For the permit, you can actually do it out of zirconium. Okay. Yeah. Now, did you notice a difference in your scan precision? Uh, both arch, I mean, both quads, bilateral quads, when you went to the prime scan over the uh, the Omnicam? Oh, much easier. Yeah, yeah. Much, much easier. Uh, and I also have an iTero, and I use that for oh, okay. getting some of my uh, information. I know. I, I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Todd, we, hey, can come up with, we can come up with some other ones for him tonight and, and yeah. plan his future of purchase. If there's any salespeople watching, I think you need to find out Gene Messenger outside of Boston. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's been fun because uh, it, it brought me to meet you guys. Um, yeah, that's how we met. So I consider my family. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed the adventure. It's been a lot of fun. I really like it. If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would probably still do the same thing, but I'd probably do it in the Southwest. Oh, so. <laughs> Uh, okay uh, yeah well yeah no it's true it's really cool the the brotherhood that we all have in the uh, digital dentistry and that you know we're all folk our our nucleus has been seric all these years but it's expanding and growing so much i'm really i'm more curious about your uh, thoughts and impressions as a longtime seric user what you think of as uh exocad and a little bit more on user friendliness and the abilities of it um exocad it just like with anything, the first time that you're tr starting to use it, it seems cumbersome. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm one of those people, monkey see, monkey do. So years ago when we first got Sarah, we went away and took a course. Um, we haven't been, I bought ExoCAD three months ago and I haven't been able to go away and take a course. So mm -hmm. um, what I've been doing is watching a lot of videos. I really believe hands-on is the best way to learn. Um, also, when I teach hands-on, I learn something because yeah. some, the class brings up something. So I really can't wait to go to an ExoClad course and really go from start to finish. Because mm -hmm. some of the videos I've watched like 10 times and I'm like, okay. And there's a lot of little steps with ExoCAD. Um, yeah. Ins and outs. If you touch the screen and certain, if you touch a tooth, it does one thing. If you touch the background, it touches, it does something else. Um, it's a very interesting software, though. Uh, I'm looking forward to mastering it. Yeah. Like I have with this machine. Now, is one reason why you got that outside of controlling maybe your hybrid platform would be your planning platform, your your that, your prototype platform? Because I heard it's it, that's that's really pretty good. Exactly. Matter, yeah. matter of fact, taking photos and doing the digital scans, yeah. putting them together. Because I was using DSD digital smile design. Yeah. It would cost money to send it to them, and I've done a couple cases with them, and. It can it, the the price tag can add up quite a yeah. bit. Um, then you yeah. lose a little control with that, don't you? Yeah, and then you don't get to design it. And what right. I like about when I'm designing it, I I'm already becoming intimate with the patient's teeth. Right. Instead of just having something that somebody sends me and not really knowing what they've done, what's nice about doing an Exocad in conjunction with in lab and in conjunction with Sarah, you can really d dial your case in and really. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Did something happen back there? Jean, is uh, hey, Donna. She's making me a birthday cake. Donna, are you okay back there? <laughs> she needs to wave. Just wave at us back there. <laughs> you got drop something. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta tell everybody about Donna, your wife. I mean, you're, yeah, you guys, I love, love seeing you guys on Facebook and I love running into you to meetings because you're one of those those couples just like uh, Daniel and Lulu Vasquez yeah, uh, that yeah, people need to, you guys are great role models, let's put it that way. So tell us yeah. a little bit about, about your uh, marriage. Well, let's see, we, I met her when I was 17. 
first day at college, um, and introduced myself to her um, right in front of her mom and dad. Her mom and dad left uh, the campus, and then we've been together ever since. And she's my best friend. Uh, been married for 35 years, and she lets me buy all my toys. Actually, uh, so my wife is watching tonight, and she just oh, no. said, "She just said, uh, ask Gene if his wife gets upset with his gadget addiction." <laughs> oh, hold on, I'll ask her. Hey, honey. Here. Yeah. Okay. Here comes Donna. Here comes Donna. So she'll t she'll tell us. So Donna, we Donna, we have questions for you about Gene, and you can say anything you want. Okay. <laughs> So uh, how do you deal with Gene's addiction when it comes to digital gadgets? My, my wife wants to know. Okay, so <laughs> I am very proud of the man that he is, and I've never once have been disappointed by anything that he's done. Wow. He, he truly loves what he does, and I am proud to be his wife and to see him excel in his in his field. So no, there's never been a time when I was disappointed. He is who he is. I'm not going to change him. <laughs> and he's, he, he spoils me. So it's, it's oh, okay. Wow. It's we okay. love that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's <laughs> special. <laughs> you know, Donna, you're, you're intimately involved in the practice as well, correct? A little bit. Well, she has um, what, uh, what a lot of people may not realize uh, is she also is an esthetician. So okay. we have sort of messenger uh, dig, uh, mis messenger beauty, beauty spot escape. beauty okay. escape. Yeah, we haven't been there in three months. So uh, know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, she, she has her business downstairs. I do oh, okay. her hair reduction and um, yeah. So I'm there um, only a couple of days. Um, it's hard. It's hard being the wife and and yeah. and. Yeah. and business running um he uh, you we it's our only conversation it seems like that you know when we get home that's all we talk about so yeah um yeah i i am involved but it's more so trying to figure out the best way to to push things forward she's sure. really good about having patients from downstairs coming up for botox or dermafill or miniature facelifts <laughs> and then i send patients down after we've done their teeth i said look your teeth has the canvas your lips and your cheeks are are the frame so let's yeah. get it all together and it works out pretty well well that's that's wonderful what what a what a combination there but see she's one of the people that want to retire <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now, uh, you, you have to tell us about your daughter and what's going on. What She's a dentist now, right? So why don't you? Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, been, uh, let's see. Bye, practicing. Donna. Hi. Bye, Donna. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank yeah, you. She's been practicing for eight years. She graduated in 2012, and she uh, came and worked with me for about three and a half years, and she kept on seeing uh, an ad, uh, the Army's looking for a few good men, and there weren't any men in the fish uh, in the pond here in North Adams, so she joined the army and she found her man, and she's now uh, right now practicing in Eugene, Oregon. Oh, okay. and it's been nice. there for almost a year. Um, she doesn't want to practice in private practice. She doesn't like all the business side of it, sure. the headache. So um, she's still in the army reserves and I think she's going to be working for uh, a VA up in Washington, I think. Okay. Yeah. That's, awesome. it looks like that's where they're planning on going. Now, what is it like having a, a, a daughter as a dentist? I, I, it just, it's gotta be an amazing experience at the dinner table, Thanksgiving, the conversations that come up. <laughs> oh, we talk every single night. Uh, okay. and uh, mm -hmm. she asked me questions about all the different cases that she has. And sometimes she calls me during the day. Um, it's fun. When she got accepted to dental school, I cried for three hours. Oh. I was so happy. I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying because I know how great dentistry has been for me and how much I love it. And uh, I knew it was going to be a perfect fit for her as well. And so I'm very proud of her. And uh, she is loving uh, what she's doing. And that's the most important thing. And she was loving who she's with. I'm just waiting for you know, him to ask me, you know, when can he marry her? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's watching. I'm watching. <laughs> and then you, you folks have a son as well, correct? 
our son. Yep, he's doing really well. He lives uh, over in Albany, about an hour and a half from here. And um, this COVID thing has kind of slowed down some of the, his progress. Um, but he's doing very, very good, and uh, we're uh, we're doing we're doing very well. Um, this has been a very interesting time to reflect. Yeah. yeah. So we're so, all in different uh, we're all in different parts of the country. Uh, you guys are both on the coast. I'm in the mid coast in Texas, and we're all opening up different times. You being in Massachusetts, you're not open now, right? And when is when is it when you think you can open? We're hoping we've been closed since March 15th, and we are hoping that we're going to be able to be open soft opening June 15th. Mm. That's uh, that's. Right now, if Governor Baker allows it, uh, a lot of it just, I don't know what variables he's doing, but I think that uh, we're in the so far western part of the state, we're kind of like in the boonies. So we don't have as many cases as they have out by Boston. Boston, they were inundated. And we're close enough to New York City that a lot of people had second homes that came up here. So I think that was the concern. Um, But overall, it's been relatively quiet. I've had one patient. Um, she's 92 years old, diabetic, and she had, she had it, but she never exhibited any symptoms. Um, huh. never even had a temperature. Um, but it affects people differently. It does. Yeah, yeah it, does. it does. Now, are you, uh, are you communicating with your team through all of this? And, uh, wh- now you have a, you have a big practice. You have a lot of people that work there. So how, how do you think it's going to shake out when you're back to work? Well, um, we, I have I had 19, and before all this went about, and because of this, uh, the biggest company in town just uh, we just lost 300 jobs, and I had uh, let's say I have one hygienist who uh, retired a year early, and I have um, uh, an associate who a little medically compromised, so I think he is actually going to be taking some time off. And I have a periodontist that works one day a week, and I think we're probably going to be dialing that down as well. So we are shrinking the office, and it's going to coincide with all the things that are that are going on. I feel pretty optimistic overall. Uh, I think that this was a really good time to kind of reevaluate everything and to kind of just make sure that we had everything set up the way we wanted. We're going to we're going to shrink a little bit, but then in, at the end of the day, we may grow or we may just be more efficient with our time. Um, I, I'm going to practice the same way. We're going to go a little bit slower, mainly because of this. And uh, I feel overall pretty, pretty optimistic. Um, there's some good things that are coming out of this. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. You know, another thing I want to ask you about, because you love to learn, you're good at what you do. And with your type of practice, obviously, you're an incredible leader and manager. How do you was that just a natural thing for you? Or did you have to grow into that through the years? I think I kind of grew into it mainly because each step that I took, I enjoyed it so much that that I, I think my personality, uh, it's very infectious. It makes it to where when I'm around somebody, I'm so excited, they get excited. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I really, I absolutely love what I do. And Sarek was probably one of the biggest things that made it to where one, I felt like I wasn't alone. Um, yeah. I got to meet you guys years ago. And even though you're a million miles away, it, uh, we can do cool stuff like this. Oh, 20 yeah. years ago, we could do this. <laughs> so yeah. this, this is a lot of fun. And, uh, and teaching, um, I like teaching my staff and I giving them more, more responsibilities to try not or try to make it to where I'm not doing every single part. It took me mm-hmm. about 20 years before I gave up the Sarek machine. Um, cause I did it all. I, matter of fact, I didn't let anybody custom stain and glaze and, and actually, your, as a matter of fact, both your videos help teach my girls how to do that. So uh, um, it's been fun because it makes them feel have fun with what we're doing. And implantology uh, in the last 10 years has just grown tremendously. And it's probably one of my best and favorite things to do. One of my um, favorite one of my favorite memories of Eugene is you doing the live uh, patient surgery. at uh, What meeting was that? I'm drawing a blank. But you were... Oh, gosh. It was a few years ago. Awesome. Oh, was it uh, 10 years ago? 10 years oh ago in Austin, yeah. Look, look at oh, you wow. being the pioneer of digital 
uh, implant placement. That was that's pretty awesome. Ten years ago, that was that was fun. That was uh, with uh, Dr. Neil Patel. Oh yeah, he, that's right. He, he was my narrator. It was actually his patient, but I had a license in Massachusetts, so right. I oh. that day, and uh, it, it, I absolutely, it's amazing how everything fits together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. absolutely love it. Well, that's the part of dentistry I love is the uh, creativity and adding these new disciplines to be better at what we do. And with, with this downtime, I needed a few more CEs, so I was getting it online. So I went to dentalxp.com, and, and I enjoy watching various perspectives. And one of the comments I saw about digital within implant is that it is more predictable, and you can really – have less appointments and more precision, which gives you a better outcome. And I, I think that's the whole message of digital platform is that we can be better at what we do with more predictability. And I think you've demonstrated that definitely within your implant role. What do you see next coming over the horizon? You have ExoCAD. What are some of your ambitions with what you see coming on the digital front? Um, I really like what, uh, carbon, uh, the carbon company, they have the carbon house printer print dentures. Uh, yeah. the machine itself is very expensive. That, yeah. that is something that I'll be buying. Um, but, um, just more one visit dentistry. And I think because mm -hmm. of COVID, I think we're going to see a lot more people that get involved in digital because mm -hmm. you're going to eliminate visits. Uh, mm -hmm. and you're going to try to be able to do more things in one visit because it costs more to have each patient in the chair. And the patient's time is going to be demanding as well. So um, I, I think it's a good time to be in digital dentistry. I, actually, yeah. I think it's probably the best time to be in digital dentistry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, do, you you think it's a, do you think it's a right. time to actually start it right now? If you were a dentist, maybe a uh, newer practice coming right out of all this virus vacation, as I call it? A absolutely, I would. If it costs you $60 more per patient to set up a room to, and then to break it down above and beyond what you're doing already, you're going to need to utilize your time. Because if you're seeing 20, 30 patients a day, that adds up to an overhead that you didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Doing one visit dentistry decreases that. And it also doing one visit dentistry, your return on investment is great because you're not having the patient back two or three times, but you're literally finishing in one visit. That's a really good point because, Todd, I don't know how it's impacting you, but I know I've been open for two weeks now, and we schedule more turnaround time because we there's certain sanitizing procedures we're doing. And I have yeah. to change my bean soup uh, suit, so, you know, <laughs> that that's part of it. So, uh, it, But you know, the hardest thing for me is wearing the, the head, head garb, you know, the hairnet and all that. Because I, when I look in the mirror, I don't even recognize myself, Gene, and I've been having some personality issues over that. So. <laughs> <laughs> what they do in the hospitals, they put a picture of themselves uh, on their jacket just so patients we know. Look I like. know there was a reason for this conversation tonight because now I keep my identity alive. That's yeah. brilliant. Yes. Very or good. you can be somebody else. You can get a picture of Todd and put it on yours and. Switch around. I, I know what I'm going to do because I have like two new patients tomorrow. So when I walk in the room, I have a picture. Say, this is really who I am. <laughs> that would be great. It more personable. <laughs> hey, you got to laugh and, and, and have some fun with it. Absolutely. Because we will adapt. We will adjust. We and... will adapt. Yeah. But... You know, it, it, what we can't do is rest on our laurels. We got to be aggressive. We got to we got to take things, you know. Uh, up front, and I know we've got these race riots things happening and everything, and that's going to affect our businesses as well. But as James and I were talking about before we brought you on, Gene, is that uh, it's got to be in a heartfelt way. And I know mm -hmm. you and Donna, the, the businesses you run, you're going to do that. And I think we can be a big impact in our local communities by being positive mm -hmm. to our patients, but being strong leaders at the same time. And I I, God bless you, uh, all the people in your community that have lost their jobs coming through this. Uh, what do you yeah, think you're going to yeah. do with, with those people that are suffering? Well, a lot of the, the sad thing is a lot of them are husband and wife that both have worked there for 20 or 30 years. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wow. So it's, we are going to lose some patients. They'll have to move to find a different place because where we live, it's about 12,000 uh, people total. And then mm. Albany is about 45 minutes away. Um, mm. But 
Well, we're going to adapt. Uh, our hospital shut down about six years ago, and that they were the number one. Uh, so we've gone through a couple different tragedies in this area, but it's going to be okay. My practice is still what, produ- producing one of the top numbers in in the country, um, and we'll we'll, we'll adapt. Um, I think dentists as a whole, we learn to adapt for each situation because no no uh, two crowns are exactly the same, so we have no, to they learn. Are. And uh, <laughs> it's um it's it's going to be okay. I think we yeah. do have to be optimistic, and we have to portray that to our patients. Yeah, we have to portray that to our staff, uh, and to let them know that we are on top of it. And you know, Gene, one of the things that was interesting to me when coming back and even seeing some emergencies during the downtime is how appreciative the patients were that we'd even see them. Uh, well, that surprised me. I saw that across all age groups. Half of my patients are. 65 and older and it was really amazing to see how appreciative they were and so i i i I know todd you're up to 100 percent already aren't you we're we're at 100 percent easy yeah Uh, Uh, yeah no i Go ahead, go ahead, Jay. Sorry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> there's, a little, there's a little bit of a delay here. So, the, so if, if people are watching this and you're on Skype, there's a little bit of de- a delay. And that's that's why you see Todd and I dancing a little bit here. Todd, what were you saying? No, nope, I'm not talking. Do you say what you wanted to say? <laughs> the hassle I have is my hygienist is a little more mature than me. And she's been with me off and on for 30 years. And then she had to have wrist surgery, so her replacements were people that were also more mature than me, which I love them because I walk into a room with a hygienist that's more mature than me chronologically, and you've got 80 years of experience in that room in dentistry, which was nice, but then they have a risk coming back. So right now, I'm without a hygienist, and I'm trying to find someone to hold in for two more months. So it, you know you have to pivot and then adjust, but at least I'm back doing what I love. And uh, we're okay. That's what I was trying to say. (laughs) I think all of us are going to have staff changes, maybe improving. Who knows? Maybe this is a good way for some people to move on to their next best job. (laughs) Who knows? Uh, You know, or retire. Who knows? Because uh, we all have different emotions coming through all this and we we need Uh to be sensitive to it. But, but, and this may sound a little harsh, but as business owners ourselves, we have to move forward. We can't, we can't wait, you know, uh, waiting on our government checks and waiting on uh, insurance payments and everything. There's not a way to run a business. We, we have to be forward thinking. And, and Gene, I know your practice is going to be forward thinking because nobody owns as many CERC machines as you. You got those things humming and running and gunning. And I know that uh, when you get back on on your uh, two feet, your dental two feet, your practice is going to be rocking and rolling, right? Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. A couple more weeks. Two more weeks. Well, I, I am, I'm praying for you, my friend. I, you should, you should be back in business. Um, I, we're all dealing with political things and there's no different down where I'm at versus where James is at, where you're at. And, uh, hopefully things will shake out for you. So you got anything, uh, to say out to your, your fans out there? Uh, just keep plugging and just be positive and just enjoy the ride and mm-hmm. be thankful because we are really are blessed being able to we do are blessed. Uh, doing the things that we absolutely love. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. I couldn't imagine hanging out with a cooler bunch of guys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Uh, we'll see you soon. Hopefully at uh, the DS World. I think it's I think it's going to happen this year. Hopefully. Uh, you guys, is it going to happen? All right. From As, what we just heard last week, they said that they're still planning it. So they're still planning it. So you oh, and Donna yeah. got, got to be out there with bells on. I'll be there. <laughs> I know you will be there. You you wouldn't miss it. <laughs> All right, Doctor Gene. Thanks, brother. Thanks for All coming right. on. Thanks for coming on. See you guys. Uh, he's one of my favorites in this uh, digital world. He's yeah. so much fun, and I just I just always had so much fun running into him and his wife at, at the event. So I'm glad uh, glad he well, made some time to be on tonight. I would have liked to dissect his managerial expertise a little bit more. To have a practice like his doesn't come by a natural effect. It, you have to have some skill sets to put it all together, and to keep that passion alive. When I see people like 
gene and that type of practice, I know what it takes to get that, that I have a lot of respect for him just from that standpoint. We didn't talk about that too much, but I think we could probably do an, another webcast with him just about his managerial philosophies and how he keeps a team alive with passion. Yeah. He, he's very unique in our field. And both you and I are educators, and I've, I've been around. You know, I got my speaking start actually speaking for Bill, Bill Blatchford because, you know, I loved dentistry when I got into dentistry, but I would say my natural leadership skills were lacking. And I took a lot of CE in leadership. And as I look through, you know, I'm a people pleaser off the charts, and, and I had to get that in balance with leadership. And you, you want to be nice to people, but you also have, they need to know where you're going. And, and my, my issue was trying to please everybody, please a patient, please my team, please this. And then pretty soon it just becomes this thing that runs around. But I got my start in education with Bill Blatchford because I went through his program and made a major shift in my career. Mm -hmm. And then I shared that story with people. And that's when I got started doing all this. Yeah. Now, Gene, uh, I can already tell you, he, he is a great leader because he's nice and he respects his team members. I can tell you that's that's uh, his core value. Uh, and you know what I loved? I loved the testimony of his wife, Donna. Yeah. That, that was significant. You know, being best friends, supporting one another to the max, that, that's a big ingredient of success because you need, you need the support at home for what you do out there. And, and I really admire that. I'm, I'm glad that Todd, I'm glad you brought her in so she could share that. That, that was priceless to me. Well, she made all the noise in the background and their dogs well, were like going crazy had, when I was looking back there. We had to bring so. her on, but she's, she's one of my favorites. Uh, so, uh, everybody make sure, uh, you check out our Facebook page, uh, make sure you like it. Uh, yeah. we're growing every day. It's, we're very honored to have all our friends, uh, support mm -hmm. us. And, uh, you know, James, uh, you're one of my all time favorite friends, good friends, and I respect you greatly. And I and think, back, uh, and back wise. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's, uh, let's keep forward thinking. Let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's all in the digital Seric world, start looking at DS world in Las Vegas. It's going to happen. Yes. I know it's going to happen. So start planning for it. You got mm -hmm. any last words, my friend? No, thanks. This was actually a little bit of a therapy session for me tonight. Uh, you I know, think so. You know, just to talk to other people and kind of get your mind focused again. And, um, you know, part of living life is not the success we have, but the hiccups and how we respond to them. Amen. And that's, right. uh, that, that's what this is all about. And that's why I love our community. It's just amazing. They're, <laughs> they're great people. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. And, uh, Be safe. Yeah, you'll uh, get some notices on, uh, this week on our next guest. And uh, James, we will see you around. Thanks, everybody. See you, buddy.